Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, today I'm talking about a band that I've actually toured with once years ago, many years ago, not with The Darkness, but with a band in between called Hot Leg, um, and the band's called Alter Bridge. Um, they've got a song called Holiday, which came out on the 18th of January. I think this is the first time I've spoken about Alter Bridge on uh, this channel, so as you can imagine, I'm tremendously excited, and I hope you are too. <laughs> nice one. All right. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Okay. Here are some comments that are on the Alter Bridge video that I'm about to talk about. Um, <clears throat> the Ginger Fisherman said, Alter Bridge have to be one of the most consistent bands when it comes to the quality of their music. Some bands divert and follow trends, try to go mainstream and lose a lot of old fans, but not Alter Bridge. You could literally listen to Broken Wings right after Holiday and think they're on the same album. That's good, isn't it? It speaks to the consistency of uh, the music that this band produces. Um, Derek Steinker, Steinker says, I'm so happy the production quality finally matches the quality of their writing. So many of their albums were so overly compressed. The mastering on this new album is fantastic. That compression in mastering, um, as Derek has pointed out there, is something that I think kills a lot of the sort of dynamics of a, of a, of a really good rock band, you know? I think there's, there, there seems to, be, to have been loudness wars where people are always just trying to get as much out of um, much volume out of their recordings as possible, and it means that the bits that are supposed to be sort of, you know, the calm before the storm, don't hit in the same way. So when the storm finally comes, it's kind of like, oh, okay. So the whole thing's loud. And when you look at like a, a modern waveform, if you happen to import something that you're listening to um, into Pro Tools, for example, you you used to be able to look at a waveform and it would be like about half half the height. There'd be a bit where it gets really, really thin and it'd get wider in the choruses. And, you know, you, you used to be able to sort of visually have a, have a sort of... You'd be able to visually recognise the dynamics in a song. Then I think everyone was just trying to get get their song to sound as loud as possible on the radio or something. And then everything was just... The waveforms just looked like a sausage. Um, anyway... Andy Mood Nareen says, this man's voice is something else. Yeah, he's got a great voice, hasn't he? Yeah, just getting back to that uh, mastering thing. I think in the 80s, stuff was mastered much quieter um, because it was mastered for CD and for vinyl. And vinyl mastering has to be a bit quieter because I think when it's, when it's super loud and hitting the limiter like that, sometimes the bass frequencies can make the needle jump out of the record. So you have to sort of approach vinyl mastering a little bit different. When vinyl was the, you know, predominant format that people, in, in, you know, consumed music with, it was important to make sure that the records played without having to keep putting the needle back on there. It would have been frustrating, wouldn't it? Um, but I suppose digital music has changed all that. Okay, let's have a look at this. I'll put the old cans on and uh, we'll take it from there. Nice sweeping um, synthesizer chord there in um, B flat, I think. Mm -hmm. It was B flat and it seems to have morphed into E flat now. That suggests that this is going to be one of those situations where the whole guitar is detuned to semitone. No, it's B flat. I was right the first time. Hang on a second. Dim, 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 dim. But um, this is one of those ones where the whole guitar is detuned to semitone, and it's probably a seven-string guitar with uh, an additional B string that's lower. It's really low, isn't it? <laughs> it's swingy. I just remembered that we did a, a thing about Miles Kennedy, wasn't it? He was singing with um, Slash and the Conspirators. Um, and I think I observed in that Slash one that he was operating in in a, um, in a sort of minor pentatonic area. So basically just doing blues singing, really. And I think that's what's happening here. I think he's, uh, I think he's in B-flat um, mi minor pentatonic.
some harmonic bits in there as well. A little bit of the um like in terms of the riffery and the way the drums are approached doesn't it remind you a little bit of that no one knows you know the queens of the stone age you know it's swingy and aggressive in exactly the same way but i think these these sounds are much more metal um and less old school than the um the queens of the stone age one There's more to life than living, so I'll sp spread my wings and fly. Wow, that's really interesting, isn't it? What kind of concept is that? So, if you're, if there's more to life than living, there's more to life than living. So, an important aspect of life, presumably, is dying? Or is it making a living he's talking about? Maybe li living as in earning a crust. He played the fool time and time again. It's important to do that. I always, um, I always do that. Actually, <laughs> it's good. People underestimate you, and that's a good position to be in. I think Miles has figured out the same thing, especially in the music trade. I love this bit. <laughs> It's funny because uh, Mark Tremonti is a brilliant guitar player, but I tell you what, Miles is pretty handy. He's pretty handy. So peace, of peace of mind, isn't it? That's what everyone's looking for, isn't it, at the end of the day? Which piece, though? <laughs> I don't know what that means, even. Ah, he's saying more than life than a living, but I did think it was like um, then, then living, and then the ah was just something that he added as a mnemonic device. But I actually think he's saying there's more to life than a living. So I guess he's talking about work, isn't he? And allowing the the daily bureaucratic grind to uh, infect the parts of being a human being that are actually important, you know. Um, I was speaking to um, the preeminent um, evolutionary psychologist yesterday who told me that, um, you know, evolutionarily, uh, we, we are still like human beings that are kind of configured to run away from things like saber-toothed tigers and stuff. And now the main fear is, is things like deadlines and bosses and stuff like that. That's no way to live, is it? And I think that's what, you know, Miles Kennedy is touching on there. It's, this is actually a song that, that delves into evolutionary psychology. There you go. Really, 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 really uplifting piece of music with a brilliant message about abandoning the things that cause daily anxiety, I think, and just, you know, talking about living as opposed to a living and not being part of the eternal trudgery, uh, the, the grind, you know. Sticking it to the man. That's old-fashioned rock and roll, in fact, isn't it? When you think about it, that's actually the overarching theme of a lot of the best rock in the world. So there you have it. That's uh, Alterbridge doing something brilliant, I think. Well done. Nice one, guys. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos and keep coming back guys. Nice one. <laughs>